أعوذ بالله من الشيطان العين الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين الصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين أبي القاسم محمد صلى الله عليه وآله وسلم وعلى البيت الطيبين الطاهرين المعصومين سيما بركة الله في الأرضين وجل الحسن العسكري ولأنت الله على أعدائهم أجمعين من الآن إلى قيام يوم الدين So we discussed the issues to do with sick people in the month of Ramadan now there are certain people that ask during the month of Ramadan <coughs> during the month of Ramadan uh, they need to have certain medicines so they're sick they need to have certain medicine during the month of Ramadan so they need to have for example a uh, um, take antibiotics antibiotics is something quite common people take for whatever illness sickness whatever may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala keep us health inshallah, that they need to have. Now, if they were to take the medicine in the shape of pills, and the taking of the medicine is essential to the health. So to our turn, they will say to you, you know what, if you take the medicine, it's better. If you don't, it's fine. Then you're not allowed to take the medicine. If it is essential for whatever treatment you're having, if you take it orally, then you don't fast. What you do is do your qada. However, if there is an option to have it uh, through an injection where it's not taken orally, then you must take the injection and the injection then becomes something outside the eating and drinking so your fasting is still validated. Yes? Say you have to take the pill. Um, does that mean they have to still not eat? Like uh, we, said, we said like before, so, for example, someone needs to take a pill. First of all, they must take the pill with no water or the minimum amount of water. It's not a case that you can uh, uh, drink three bottles of water with it. Second of all, imsak. The less fasting is something which is bad for that person because of their illness. So they've got a particular infection, they shouldn't fast anyway. So they should eat. That's another matter. But generally, and this is another issue for, for people that, take, uh, that can't take fasting or they have to drink a small amount of water. So some people have certain kidney issues, they need to have a small amount of water. They can't, at some point they, they, they can no longer take the thirst. In which case, they take the minimum amount required. It doesn't mean they can eat after that, it doesn't mean they can drink after that. The minimum amount they have to take, they can take. Yes. What if the medicine needs to be dissolved in water? Yes, yeah, so if it's dissolved in water with pills and so forth, fine. But again, if it's the medicine is dissolved in water in a way that it can be given to them uh, through uh, drips, then the drips don't invalidate your fast. People can take uh, the medicine, the uh, the water, whatever they need to have in their bodies through drips and the drips do not invalidate their fast. Go on. Uh, you know, if a, pers- a person is, is, is fasting, for example, and that's how something happened to them, uh, and it's before the Quran, they had to break their fast, they don't pay kafara, right? But if it's, is that right? Say that again. If someone's fasting and something happens to them, that's my father, it has to make them break their fast. And if it's before Salat al they don't have to pay kafara, right? They don't pay kafara full stop. If, the, if someone has to break their fast for whatever reason, kafara is when? Kafara is, is for something that you've done wrong. Oh. Kafara, to, uh, the, the, the whole point of kafara is for something you've done wrong. If something's outside your hands, there's but no they kafara have to for repeat it. They have to repeat it, and yes. So, for example, if someone has a diabetes and they're fasting, and that's so like if, and if for, for example, imagine even if you're an old person, mm. because of your age, you can't fast. But it happens. That we said we read in the whole Quran that a compulsory offer to you is fedya to ta'am al miskin. But it happens that you know what? It came through Muharram time, for example, that fasting is six, seven hours and the weather is nice and cool. By the time the person gets up, they can make up the qada fasts that they ate in Ramadan. Huh? Then they need to do that. When does the. Uh, the kafara come into effect if they miss it out for an entire year so they're able to do it they didn't fast for whatever reason 
and the year went past then until the Ramadan after and they never did their qadha fast then for each day they need to do kafara ta'khir again which is ta'am al-miskin muddu ta'am al-miskin it's not very much at all is that clear? so we said was drips are allowed uh, for sick people what is in discussion then is that can you do it without being sick? Can you take uh, water drips and put it through your veins? Or maghadiyat, the, the food supplements that go through drips. People that are sick, a lot of them take food through drips. So you, you pay someone, a nurse, and they strap you up and they, and they put things into your veins. You don't feel thirst or hunger. And your body is fully functional. Most of the fuqaha say it's fine. At the end of the day, you've not done anything which breaks your fast because you haven't ate or drank anything. Some of the fuqaha say that it still counts as eating because it is a supplement or it's an eating supplement that you don't need it. But most of the fuqaha allow it. Even if it's non-essential food supplements that is going through the drips and coming through your body. Does it change your need? Why? And if your knee is fasting, like or what is fasting? If you're doing what is fasting? To, uh, we said we said fasting was what before? Al Mufattarat. Ma istimrar al niyya. So if this is not one of the Mufattarat and you still need the Qurbat Allah, what is the problem? So when you're using that, what's your knee for using that? Nothing. When you're walking on the street, what is your knee for walking on the street? Why do you have to have a knee to put to put something into your vein? Okay. Sounds a bit naughty. A knee is for ibadat. You're not doing ibadat to do others. Ala kulli hal. So, it doesn't count as eating or drinking. One of the issues that people ask, and it's good for you guys to know if people ask you, is people that have breathing difficulties or asthma. They need to take these uh, inhalers. Now, <coughs> <coughs> most of the fuqaha have said that these inhalers are allowed because they're not eating or drinking. However, some of these inhalers, according to some of the scholars, are not allowed or they invalidate the fast. Why? Because they turn into water when they come into your mouth. So you actually drink it. It's not a gas that you inhale. If it's a gas you inhale, no one says there is an issue with it. Because inhaling gas is uh, not something that invalidates your fast. So for example, you want to have a fun with your friends and you inhale hydrogen or whatever to make your voice become funny. That doesn't invalidate your fast. What smoking? Uh, smoking, most of the fuqaha say that it invalidates your fast. Yeah. At the very least, as a compulsory precaution. What eye drops? And nasal sprays. Huh? Eye drops and nasal sprays. Again, na- nasal sprays, if they turn into water where you drink water, it becomes chronic. Eye drops, no, there's no eating or drinking. Um, so, with regards to the sick person who needs to inhale gases, again, they're allowed to inhale any gases that they need to inhale. With regards to drips, they're allowed to take drips. With regards to medicine, they're allowed to take medicine, as long as it's not taken orally. The nasal spray is a liquid though, when you... The only, what's that? Nasal spray, when you spray into your nose. That's what I said, if it comes into a liquid and you drink it, it becomes embedded. Okay. So, one other thing that is not through oral consumption, which invalidates uh, the fast, is certain types of animals. So certain uh, pills or certain uh, drugs or supplements and so forth that are used from the behind, in that sense, yes, they invalidate the fast as well if they're taken by intention. Now, other than that, many other things that may enter the mouth and not go down the mouth also do not invalidate. So, for example, if it's a hot day and you want to put water into the mouth to, to, to make your mouth colder or cleanse your mouth, you're allowed to do so, as long as it doesn't come down. If it comes down, it invalidates your fast. Even by accident, if you put water in your mouth 
and goggle it and it comes down, you've invalidated your fast. Only in one exception, and the exception is the gargling of the, the water in the mouth for wudu, because there is a nest, there's a rawai of this, it's hadith. It's mustahab to do this before you, uh, when you wash your, when you, before, you, before, you, before you wash your face, you put water into your nose and water into your mouth, and you spit it out. If by accident something goes down and you did it for the sake of wudu, qubratan Allah azza wa jal, this is an exception. It doesn't invalidate your fast. Using toothbrush, <coughs> toothbrushes, mouthwashes, it's all allowed. <coughs> as long as nothing goes down your mouth, it's gone. I wanted to ask you about the toothpaste. Yeah, so, so t- again, flavor. yeah, t- fla- flavor does not affect it. Um, tooth, uh, the uh, mouthwashes have flavor as well. Mm-hmm. As long as it's not eating or drinking, it doesn't, it doesn't go down. So is that the same with chewing gum? Then? Uh, chewing gum, some people say that it's, it's impossible to chew gum without bits actually eventually finding way down. Mm-hmm. But if, if, if you can, if you're sure that nothing goes down, if you, this is information, you have to have conviction, nothing goes down. If you have conviction, then it's fine, whether it's chewing gum or otherwise. It's not actually eating. So hence, there is a... Um, some of the fuqaha say that even tasting food is allowed. Because it's, you put it on your stomach, you, you, on, on your tongue, you don't actually eat it. You spit it out. You want to taste it whether it has enough salt or enough pepper, and you spit it out again. It doesn't actually go down. It's not eating or drinking. Because it's eating or drinking that invalidates it, not tasting. You're, you're not your tongue touching something else. Ala kulla hal. So, um, the reason we mentioned these was to do with sick people. That we said that uh, with regards to sick people, the first point to remember is that there is a contradiction if they think they're doing something clever or something to please Allah, but in fact they're, hurt, they're hurting their bodies, they're harming their health, in order to fast. In some situations, not only are they not doing something mustahab or acting on the wajib, but they're doing something which is forbidden haram. So you have to they have to answer for this. So sometimes, for certain people, not only fasting is not compulsory, but in fact it becomes compulsory not to fast. And for them to, 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 to fast or try and do it, they may make it halfway through the day before they fall sick. That half of the day they've sinned and they've, they've acted against the will of Allah Azza wa Jal. So if anyone uh, still has doubts, then they should really discuss it with, with the medical practitioners that can tell them. Um, and most people know their own bodies. So I know, for example, most people have headaches, but headaches that are uh, bearable. Um, and those people who have kidney problems, stomach problems, ulcers and so forth, they know that they can't fast and it's forbidden for them to fast. Inshallah, we'll uh, carry on these discussions in the next sessions. Walhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen, wa sallallahu ala muhammadin wa ala bayt al-tayyibin al